let's look at materials. What are the, and probably when we go through this slide, some terminologies we'll try to grasp. So uh, it's uh, commonly you might have heard that pre-stressed concrete utilizes high strength materials. Uh, that is obviously steel and concrete. The concrete at the, uh, like I mentioned before, at release, we want to make sure there is enough strength. Also, we call it initial compressive strength. So concrete at transfer, um, most commonly we try to keep it three to five KSI. One KSI is around 6.9 megapascal. Uh, and then final strength can vary up to five KSI, 4.5 KSI to 10 KSI, which is commonly used. But even we can go as higher these days, even up to 25, 30 KSI, even the ultra high performance concrete uh, that can go as high as up to 25 to 30 KSI. So we can go up to that extent. And again, steel, uh, which we commonly used in our reinforced concrete, uh, 60 grade, 60 KSI, uh, we can mostly, we mostly used, uh, we, we use 27, 270 KSI LR, which is a little, low relaxation strand. We'll uh, talk about that. What does that mean? Uh, but you can see how high as compared to uh, reinforced concrete, what is the strength of the material we use? In the reinforced concrete, you might probably have seen 2.5 KSI to 4 KSI. That's mostly in footing or in, um, if there is a slab, we can, you might have seen that strength. Whereas we can go as high as up to 10 KSI, 25 KSI in pre-stressed concrete. And actually we need that high strength. We'll talk about that in length next slide, why we need that strength. In steel, uh, when we usually we use uh, uh, like mild reinforcement, uh, 60 KSI, we go up to 20, 270 KSI here. So um, for pre-stressed concrete, we need definitely high strength. We remain elastic in high strength because we want to stress that steel um, before we, ap we apply the surface load. That's why we want to make sure that it has high strength. If it, if it has a low yield strength, then it's going to yell. It's going. It, we are not. We won't be able to apply that initial high force. And definitely, we want to have sufficient ductility. This is very important, actually. Sufficient ductility, and uh, mostly, it again, becomes very critical if it's in a seismic zone. We want to make sure we have very sufficient ductility. If it's a, um, um, if it's an immediate failure, then it's not good. It's unsafe. Also, it has to have a good bonding properties because um, eventually the force is transferred to the structure through the bond of the concrete and then the reinforcement. So we definitely want to make sure that the reinforcement has good bonding properties. Low relaxation. So uh, low relaxation is, relaxation is the loss in the steel. If you, if there is a sustained load for a while in the steel, then there is, this property is called relaxation where the, the total effective stress is reduced. We definitely want to have low relaxation because once you transfer here, once you transfer, this force in this strand is going to stay forever until the edge of this structure, right? Uh, so we definitely want to have, there will be definitely some loss. We would want to minimize that loss. And then good fatigue, obviously, if there is, a, um, there is going to be a, a dynamic load, if you expect live load, then obviously it's going to be dynamic. We, you, we want some good fatigue and obviously corrosion resistance, right? Because usually we will put this near the face of the structure. If it's uh, when we want to maximize the capacity of the structure, we'll try to minimize the cover. And then the, at that time, we need definitely very good corrosion resistance. Again, it becomes very important when it's uh, if the environment is aggressive, if it's saline or really uh, like bad weather, then it becomes very critical. And then at the end, obviously, economic, it has to be easy to handle. Um, we need something that can cater to long span without splicing. Uh, obviously, we need um, expensive mechanical splice uh, splices. If we have to splice again, to fit into the uh, to fit those mechanical splices cast in place into those structure is very difficult. It's it's not preferred. So that's why we need something that can handle long spans. Definitely, we can. We we, we need some um, um, easy way to handle 300 feet of reinforcement in one go. We don't want to splice them. And uh, talking about concrete, we need high strength. Uh, low creep and shrinkage loss. Definitely, this this creep and creep also exists. Creep shrinkage exists in every clear reinforced, reinforced concrete structure. Any any concrete you will have that creep and shrinkage loss, long time loss. But we want to minimize that loss and definitely good in fatigue. So this is uh, talking about the steel and concrete. 
But other element here is the jacking system. Actually, you can see on the right here um, that the load is being applied, uh, how we are pulling that threaded rod. And when it's being pulled, we are just screwing that bolt at the end. So we, we, we definitely need a very high effective jacking system. And uh, when we talk about very, really long span, and there are lots of pre-stress strand, then uh, we kind of kind of push, push our limits. And then we need really huge jacking system. Uh, we, and it has to be very precise because we want to, um, we want to control the, that force the way we want. And then the size of jacking is very important, especially in PT, because um, let's go back to that structure. Okay, look at here. So probably somewhere, let's say this is a simple, uh, I'm not sure if, uh, if, let's say if it is simple, simply supported, or maybe it's a continuous, probably somewhere here you jack it, or probably somewhere here you jack it. You don't have a lot of space to put all those equipments. And then we are talking about like lots of keeps of jacking force there. So that, that has to probably, the gutter is already cast, it's already erected. So you have, when you design, you give that space to the designer. So you can say that, hey, you, I need this much of space to fit my jacking block. And then if it's like a couple of fits, it's very difficult to be fit, especially if it's a um, like eye gutter or it's a box gutter. The webs are really thin, right? You, can, you cannot have like two feet of wave just to fit the jacking block. That would be really un, uh, like, it's not possible. So that's why I said that this size of even the jacking block, that the, the size of the jacking device, the jacking block, it, it becomes very important. Jacking block is different than jacking device. Uh, but here I wanted to say that the, you can't have an enormous size of jacking device just to put an enormous amount of force. And then obviously it has to be easy to handle. So these are the things we have to keep in mind when we uh, work with pre-stressed concrete. So why do we need high strength uh, materials? We need high strength uh, materials. Um, just, I want to give you a quick example here. If we look at this bridge, it's a very simple two span, simply supported continuous over the uh, middle gutter, middle pier. And uh, it's only 110 feet, not really big. Uh, I think it's uh, two, six feet or five feet deep eye gutters. So if you just look at this simple bridge, you can look at the forces here. Um, and I took this from, um, FHWA comprehensive design example. So you can find that yourself. Just, and again, it's a pre-stressed pre-tension. You know, we don't have any PT, so we don't have that weight um, dock friction there. Elastic sharpening is 13.7 KSI, right? Immediately after we release our strands. Shrinkage of concrete, the long-term losses, 6.5 KSI, creep is 16.5 KSI, and uh, the relaxation of pre-stressing strand is 3 KSI. If you just add them all, we are kind of like, 39.67 KSI loss in the pre-stressing strand. Okay, what, what will happen if you use a, a regular reinforcement mild concrete, 60 KSI? It's not going to work, right? I mean, even if you pull the, let's, ima let's imagine that you pull the strand to 60 KSI, and then there is a loss of 40 KSI there, and there, there is barely any, any effective stress left in that strand, right? So definitely, if you just look at this is a very simple bridge and you know when the span is longer when you have multiple spans you will have and if it's a pt you will have uh, duct friction uh, weight set anchor set all this and then these forces these losses will increase right so from this you can say that definitely we need something we can uh, apply higher effective pre stress force so that even if we have uh, losses of this amount then also we will have enough sufficient effective pre-stress force after losses, um, which will help our structure. Now, this was about steel. This was about reinforcement. Talking about concrete, if we just uh, talk about concrete, concrete stress at the center of gravity of the pre-stressing, uh, center of gravity of the pre-stressing steel at the concrete. So this is the concrete stress at the center. Let's say you just pull the strand here, right here. So at the center of the pre-stressing steel is 2 KSI. Uh, again, if you look at the faces, uh, if you look at the uh, extremities, uh, the, obviously this at this end and this end, the stress will be more. So what will happen if you just use a 4 KSI concrete or like 2.5 KSI concrete? It's not going to work, right? Immediately after release, you see the, um, and just at the transfer, the force you look for is 2 KSI. And if we look at the maximum allowable compression, if you look at the, uh, look at ASO, it's 0 0.56 FCI. 
So in order to have this two for, uh, two KSI initial strength, obviously you need almost, if you just call it 0 0.5, more than around three to four KSI of concrete, right? If you just look at this 0 0.6 FCI. Uh, even if we look at our um, IS, uh, 0 0.4 F, F prime CI to 0 0.37 F prime CI. So in order to cater to these initial stress, obviously we need some concrete around like twice of this, right? Which is four KSI. That's what we discussed before, that the initial concrete strength has to be minimum three to four KSI. So this was all about um, pre-stressed concrete. Um, we, we talked about terms and uh, materials. Now let's a bit a uh, little deeper. I think I am almost 30 minutes past. I have like 15 minutes more. This is the basic principle. In a, in a normal reinforced concrete, where you expect tension on the bottom and compression on the top. If, if you load the structure like this, right? It's a simply supported. Um, just let's talk about the cell for it. So we have tension in this pin here and the compression on top in green. So if you apply some kind of, let's say in the center of um, CG of the structure, if you apply some kind of compression, then obviously this compression will minimize some of the tensile force there. Now, if you move this reinforcement towards the end where we expect more tension, then obviously because of the eccentricity of the strand, you will apply, so because of the compressive force directly onto the CG, you will have this compressive force. But because of the eccentricity, will induce a moment, right? Because of this, so this will induce a moment across the CG, and then you will have some compression on the bottom because this strand is, strand is on the bottom. So if you do that, then if you summer, make summation of all these three forces, then obviously you will have effective compression throughout the structure. This is what exactly we are looking for in pre-stressed concrete. We want to have effective pre-stress, uh, effective compression throughout the structure. And then if you have, um, again, if, if it's a continuous girder, right? Then obviously tension will be more here on the bottom, tension will be here more in the top because it's a continuous. Then you can play with the location of the strand. That's why we drape the strand or uh, we kind of debond the strand. Then you can play with the location of this eccentricity the way you want. And then you can change this moment, right? You can change this moment. You can change this. Uh, this sign will change if you put the strand right here. So that's the whole concept of pre-stressed concrete. Since we are running out of time, then I will go a little fast here. The design objective. So when you, uh, when you study pre-stressed concrete, or when, when you design a structure, uh, pre-stressed concrete structure, these are the things you have to keep in mind. Uh, on the right side, you might have probably seen it, the popular bridge collapse happened in Miami, uh, Florida International University. And it was a very noble uh, trust concrete, new of its kind, everything was good, so many engineers, engineers involved. But uh, there are few things that got missed. So you have to make sure that you go through all these things in very minute detail to kind of um, verify multiple times, double check, triple check, before you apply the service loads in pre-stressed concrete. Some of them, uh, if we can quickly talk about is uh, the probably the most important thing we can talk about is the constructability, safety, and feasibility. Obviously, it has to be feasible. We can't have a um, thousand, uh, like a 500 feet timber garden, right? It's not just feasible. Also, constructability is very important. We have to make sure with the constant, with the location, with the material available, the constructability is very important. Safety. So here, probably, I would say the, the something that missed that got failed uh, among all the strength and everything, all checks, probably, definitely strength failed. That's why the structure collapsed. But still, probably, safety was also undermined. Because while the um, structure was erect, there were, um, um, like, traffic was allowed, right? And then if probably if there were additional safety measures, then probably they could have done something else and they could have saved the life. Six lives were lost in this accident. So they could have saved this life. So that is very important. Definitely serviceability, the purpose for which the structure is being built, economy, functionality, aesthetic, ease of future demolition and replacement. Now quickly just look at how our structure look like um, in, in actual real world. So what are the scope of pre-stressed concrete in real world? Now, if we just talk about vertical structure, I primarily divide the divide structure in two parts, vertical and horizontal. So if we look at tall vertical residential structures, parking garage, storage tank, large dome structure, tall post sign structure, special structure, 
there we always frequently use pre-stressed concrete. Like here in this, uh, if you look at this tank, you can see actually there are like marks of hoof. These are the hoops. So you can actually apply this hooped uh, pre-stressed uh, pre strands there and apply hoop stress there. And then you can at attain maximum uh, strength of the structure. You can see on the right side, um, this is like seven story building. It's a cantilever, right? Obviously you definitely, you, from this, just from the picture, you can say that there is going to be enormous demand of tension force there because huge force is cantilevered there. So we, you need definitely a pre-stressed pre -stressed strand there, they apply pre-stressed strand somehow. And then talking about horizontal structure, bridges, and actually pre-stressed concrete used very frequently in bridges because there is, when there is a need of huge strand, then definitely there is going to be tension on the bottom and you kind of want to eliminate. You can see the size of the goddess that's being transported and you can see the actually the pre-stressed strands right there. So in highway bridges, pedestrian bridges, drainage trestles, culverts, mechanical stabilized earth walls, earth retaining walls, waterway structures, dams. It's very frequently used. Uh, Pre-stressed concrete, in fact, I can't imagine having building a build bridge like this out of reinforced concrete. It's, I, I can't imagine that. We definitely need pre-stressed concrete in such a long spans. Actually, in fact, our Bandra Warli, uh, this bridge, it, it used both, both um, pre-tension, pre-cast and post-tensioning. So it, these were the pre-cast panels. They were uh, kind of segmentally built and post-tensioned to tie them into each other. And there the span length uh, just on the, I think there are like varied span length, just on the Worley channel and the cable state portion was 350 meter, right? Around like almost 900 to 1000 feet. Okay, what's future of pre-stressed concrete? Future of actually any, any, any structural element is fast is smart material. It has to be resilient, it has to be corrosion free, like if it's going to be um, uh, exposed to uh, aggressive environment, we want we definitely want to make sure it is corrosion free, ductile, right? We want to get enough indication before the, there is a uh, fracture and there is a failure of the structure. So uh, other uh, important aspect of any, any future uh, structural element is fast construction. Actually, in fact, I wanted to show a video but probably won't be able to go through it. Accelerated beach construction is the new trend, right? We want modular everything, you know, to close down everything and within a day, probably overnight, you, you want to erect it. And also we discussed about the ease of demolition, very important because there is an existing structure, you have to take it out and then, then, then replace it. So we want um, very fast construction, accelerated construction, low cost, definitely, right? everybody wants to minimize the cost and very important green and sustainable, the impact on human life, wildlife, environment, climate. We want to reuse, recycle, concrete is very good for that. And also pre-stressed concrete takes very less space when you erect in, um, as compared to some other structures. So these are the, in future, we kind of want to maximize this, right? L lately now we, are, we want to use non-metallic reinforcement, reinforcement in structure. You can't have a non-metallic steel structure, right? <laughs> um, you have to be uh, very careful about maintenance because it's going to corrode over time. But if you have a non-metallic reinforcement, like these days we are trying to explore carbon fiber reinforced com um, uh, composite cables, um, glass fiber composite cables. We want, if we use that, if we replace that instead of uh, reinforcement, uh, especially which is very close to the face of the concrete, then we don't have to worry about corrosion. We don't have to worry about maintenance. And then the, obviously the total longevity of the structure will increase. So these are the future of pre-stressed concrete that are being currently kind of test, more research is going on, more uh, implementation pilot uh, projects are going on. To, to maximize um, the structure, to make it more efficient in all these aspects. Now, this is my last part, um, career opportunities, the huge scope of pre-stressed concrete. Probably these days lately, if you work in any kind of structural field, pre-stressed concrete, understanding of good understanding of pre-stressed concrete is very important, very critical. Structural engineer probably use it a lot, but in the same time, construction engineers also need to have a good understanding of pre-stressed concrete, how it works, especially, you saw that in a precastor plant, there is a very controlled environment and is a very strict um, guideline policy in uh, if you want to minimize all those forces, the construction engineer has, has to be aware of all these things. Apart from that, geotech engineers, landscape engineers, actually lately pre-stressed uh, piles are also being used. So they definitely want to have a good understanding of this, how this pre-stressed concrete work. If not in detail, 
all the structural aspects, but at least some of the working aspects of the pre-stressed concrete. Offshore structures, definitely they use a lot of pre-stressed material because of high demand of strength. Operations and construction management is one of the probably most of the very important thing in pre-stressed concrete because uh, when you when you want to have a pre-stressed pre concrete on site, there are lots of background work involved. You have to order it in a pre or plant. It has to be correctly um, uh, cast in time. It has to be cured in time. It has to be transported in time. All these operations things are very important. If you are not able to, if you all the other elements are ready to be erected, but you, you don't have your girders ready, then it's going to be a huge problem, right? And the pre plant need um, definitely engineers who have a good idea of pre-stressed concrete special structures and if, and also in research and development if you are interested in that there is a huge scope for research and development in pre-stress